Well hey guys, you join me with the Rover P6. Now unfortunately, over the last few days, the Rover's developed a bit of a water leak, which is okay if this was just an ordinary classic car, I could just park it up in the garage and deal with it at a later date. But this is my daily driver. So of course, keep topping up water is not really an ideal scenario. You know, it's okay for the local journeys, but I use this car quite a bit. So I really need to get to the bottom of what the water problem is. Now, when I bought the car, it came with a few spares and a few water hoses. And I've also got some paper gasket. So I'm hoping there's nothing too major wrong with the car, like the water pump isn't on its way out or something like that. I'm hoping that I can do hopefully something that is a nice easy fix, but we'll soon find out. So anyway, I think the first thing to do is get the bonnet up, top it up with water, run it up warm and try and find this water leak. Now then, initially I'm just going to use pure water just to top up the radiator with just to see if I can see any coolant leaks because after all water is very cheap and inexpensive, coolant is expensive so we don't want to be topping up coolant and water in the water system to find a leak and to lose half the coolant. It's a lot easier just to use pure water. So if we just top that up to the level where it needs to be which is just about there we'll top up the expansion tank as well because you never know the leak might be coming from the expansion tank so it makes sense just to put everything back to how it should be prior to starting up the car so that should be about there we'll put all the caps back on and then just have a quick visual check around all the water hoses and then anywhere where potentially there could be a leak so it's always good to give them a little squeeze as, as well just to see if we can see anything and uh, initially there doesn't seem to be anything I'm looking around all the water hoses there's no visual leaks going back to the heater matrix again no visual leaks so I think the next thing to do is to start it up and have a quick look around and see if there's any water leaks when the car is under pressure. Okay, so we've had the engine running for a little while now and the coolant system is under a little bit of pressure. So we should be able to have another visual, see if we can find the leak. Now I've got this GoPro camera here and if I just turn it on, hit the record button and that way you guys can follow what I'm doing a little bit better on the GoPro camera so initially just have a quick look at the radiator make sure there's no obvious leaks around that just looking at both sides and that all seems quite nice and dry and we just work our way to the first cool hose again it all seems nice and dry if we start at the top and work our way down it's probably the best thing to do We've got this little coolant hose here that goes all the way to the heater matrix. Again, looks dry. The actual pipe along the back seems all all right. The hose at the back, going to the heater matrix, that all seems dry. And this hose down here seems dry, so that all seems good. We'll have a look down this side again, just being really careful because we've got the fan going off here. I don't want to cut up my hands or anything like that. Again, that seems all right. I mean, that pipe does look a little bit, little bit under a bit of a bulge. I think it's going to need replacing at some point. I'm not going to put my hand any further down there because it's right close to this fan going off. So I'm not going to check that too much. Just a visual look, really. And then we've got another hose coming around the back here. And we'll just give this one a little bit of a push. And oh, oh, there we go. I think we've found our water leak, yep, I think that's it, without a doubt, without a doubt, that this water hose here that goes from this one here behind it, that's got a split in it, so that's, that's nice and simple, so what we need to do is just take this little part off here, just to access this water hose, take it off and then replace it, and I'm only taking this little 
part off here just so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I've got a nice little bucket just here which I can just sling underneath the car because the coolant in this car isn't that old and I don't really want to be too wasteful with it. So if I can try and get this bracket out of the way somewhat then you guys may benefit seeing what I'm doing rather than just seeing it on a time lapse and we're trying to get a camera down there. I have got this little GoPro so when it comes to actually removing the pipe I'm going to go down there with the GoPro and see what we can video so that you guys will also benefit from that. Of course this is all doing this in real time at the moment so you've got to bear with me this it's going to be a little bit of quiet time when I'm just undoing nuts and bolts as I'm sure a lot of you guys do when you're doing your own cars you know there's that moment where there's not really a lot to talk about other than the job itself but uh, I'll do my best for commentary as we keep going so uh, there's three bolts holding this little bracket on as I say it's not strictly speaking necessary to take it off it's just just so you guys can see what's going on more so than anything we'll just keep the, the nuts and bolts in a safe place up there on top of the battery I think that's the common place which most people use for storing stuff is a battery yeah. so there we go and there's got little spaces behind this and there's the last one down there I'm not actually sure what the purpose of this bracket is so if somebody in the rover group would like to tell me I would be interested to know because it doesn't really seem to do a lot so if we just pull this out a little at a time there's a, that little space on the back just got to be careful of that I don't lose that there we go more important catch the spacer than the bracket and then if we just chop that little these little clips off There, and then we can put the bracket to one side but yeah I've no actual idea what this bracket is for so yeah I would be interested to know if anybody knows why Rover used that bracket because to me other than using a little spacer on this bracket here it doesn't really seem to do much I guess it's there to somehow stabilize the engine but this is the coolant hose here that we see is split I'll just put that on on the GoPro camera again just go through the settings and we're back on GoPro now and as you can see coming down here and just get some light on there too there's a clear split at the top of the coolant hose just there so it is about the right sort of time to replace that coolant hose because it's not going to do me any favours now obviously we've got the bucket underneath to catch the coolant these are somewhat old style clips on this coolant hose so I can't get a, get a ratchet going on them I can only get a screwdriver in on them sometimes when you undo nuts and bolts it's sometimes handy just to do them up a little bit and then undo them because it can sometimes free them off a little bit it sounds a bit strange that do something up to then undo it but uh, yeah right now I'm hoping this is just going to slip straight off I hope there we go sometimes they stick and that one hasn't nice lovely jubbly 
but we just about managed to catch most of that coolant as well so very happy with that but yeah look at that that's a clear split in that yeah I, I think that's more than had its day I think I've caught that more than in the nick of time so uh, yeah that could have been quite a nasty on a dual carriageway or motorway so that's a replacement coolant hose as I said I had seems a little bit longer but it might not matter too much or it might I don't know just yet we have got some hose cutters here so we can cut it down a little bit I'm just going to take a little bit off because it does seem a little bit longer than what the one that came off is these are great you can pick these up off of eBay and various places and they just cut the hose dead clean straight I might leave a link in the description box for these if anybody's interested so again just take a little bit off there because it does seem like the right style of hose I said it was just one that was in the boot of the car when I brought it so I guess that hose has been not great anyway for quite some time I've got two new little clips here I think we'll use them yeah, they're all different styles that I've got but uh, I'll try and fix out the best two and uh, it's always good with rubber to use a little bit of red rubber lubricant and it just helps put the hose on that's good for anything rubber really you know uh, a little bit of red rubber lubricant because unlike ordinary grease red rubber lubricant it doesn't affect the rubber if you put ordinary grease on rubber it can affect it and it can make the rubber go off as such and you lose the life of the rubber you know it goes all It just goes off and uh, it starts to bulge out, which is obviously not what you want. So this is quite a tight fit, as you probably would expect as it's new. seems to be on with a little bit of a kink so I think what I might do is just if I can do it by hand all, all the better otherwise I'll have to get a pair of grips to turn it but it seems because I'll put that red rubber lubricant on I seem to be able to turn it by hand which is great because that saved me to go get my grips so yeah red rubber lubricant fantastic stuff get yourself a tin and then we can just do these up so just reverse procedure I think just to save a bit of time, I think I'm going to go get my quarter inch drive. Well the great thing is about these newer style Jubilee clips over the older ones, because you see the old ones here, you don't really get a screwdriver on to tighten them up and that's it. Not that that was the failing of it, obviously it was the, the split hose, but with the newer style Jubilee clips, when you get a, a ratchet on it, and a 7mm you can get a little bit more purchase over the clip itself so you can tighten it up 
that a little bit more it's a little bit more reassuring when you've got these clips in place that they are nice and tight that's one I think that other one isn't a 7mm I think it's more a 6mm but we'll find out there in a minute I've got the 7mm on it no it is 7mm that's good sometimes they make them 6mm instead of 7 so they sometimes throw you out with the odd one Yeah, that seems like a, a bit of a cheap jubilee clip because that doesn't seem to want to be doing up. So fortunately, I have got another jubilee clip just there on the side. And I'll use that instead. Yeah, it did look a bit cheap and nasty when you look at the, the patterning is on the side where it, where it grips. So we'll use this one instead. It just now means that because the the hose is in place we've got to stretch a jubilee clip around it shouldn't be too much of a problem there we go and there we are it's doing up nicely that is and I think that cheap one's going to end up going where it belongs in the bin along with those other jubilee clips and that old hose there we go that's doing up nicely I'll just back that off a little bit just to make sure we've got enough rubber each side of the hose yeah that's fine yeah and like I always said it's nice with the with the new style jubilee clips because you can just get a little bit of a perch with a ratchet on them just make sure they're nice and tight there we go So there we go, that's the new hose in place, that's all good, we can now put the old bracket back in, so this is going to be a little bit of fiddle, getting these little spaces in place, oh no. Nope. Not quite as bad as what I thought it might be. So I say, don't speak too soon. There we go. One of three. Second one. So I think it's some sort of engine stabiliser this thing, but because uh, it's obviously going down to the to the front cross member there. But uh, yeah, I would be interested if people would let me know 100% what it is in the comments box. Because old cars like this don't generally have engine stabilisers; normally just have two big engine blocks, and that's it. But uh, yeah, please do leave a comment in, in the box down below and let me know what you think this bracket is. Right. I'm get Mr. Snap-on ratchet on this and tighten these up. There we go, nice and tight. 
finally the little clip over the top which holds the fuel pipe And then lastly, just secure the HT king lead in place before topping her up with coolant and checking her for leaks. So as I said earlier, we've got a clean bucket underneath, capturing all of the coolant, because recycling is an old game, and this coolant isn't that old, as many of you will have remembered, that this coolant was changed less than two years ago, so there's no point in replacing this coolant, we want to save as much of it as we can. The other thing is, is that I mix my coolant mixtures to uh, an almost 50-50% mixture of coolant to water. Now, strictly speaking, in the UK, that's probably a little bit overkill because you can go 33% coolant to 67% water in the UK and it, it can't be just fine. But uh, I do a 50-50 mix, so I've just added a load of water to this, which will have obviously weakened the mixture from 50-50 to a lesser mixture of coolant to water. So say it's say 60-40%. That's still fine. But I have got my refractometer just here so I can check the mixture. Now obviously this coolant has been running up so we do know it is somewhat okay. And yep, that's absolutely fine. Yep, I mean that's protected down to minus 20 which is more than adequate in the UK so uh, yeah again great little bit of kit a refractometer they don't cost too much about 20 quid on eBay if you want one for your toolkit but the next thing to do is obviously run the car up again and just recheck for leaks Well, I think I'm going to go out and buy a lottery ticket because, I mean, how badly split that hose is. I must be the luckiest man on earth to get away with that the way I have been. And I think moving forward with the Rover, I think it's a wise idea to, over the summer, probably replace all the coolant hoses so I know I've got nice, new, fresh rubber on it. But as always, guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.